After building software products for more than 15 years as a developer, an architect, a project manager, a delivery manager, a scrum master, an agile coach, I've tried to capture all I've learned about software estimation in these six rules. I believe that these rules are the truth, the reality of real life software estimation in a complex environment. The word complex here is extremely important. I believe that's where the issue lies. Let me ask you a simple question. 1,000 words, a piece of paper, a pen right now. Do you believe that you could write 1,000 words maybe for a newly created blog, an article, 1,000 words? Can you write it? Can you accurately predict how long it would take to write these 1,000 words? Estimate your work. The estimation would be based on what? Now, slightly different scenario. Still 1000 words for your newly created blog, but this time you're writing on your laptop, on a software that is available most of the time, but sometimes it goes down. It's not available. When you're writing these 1000 words, the first 500, you can't start right now. You need 200 words from another person or another team. Once you get these 200 words, you need to check it. If these are not okay, you need to send it back and wait. Then you start writing. Once everything is okay, you start writing these 500 words and then you send everything to another person so that they review the work and they'll send it back to you so that you can continue writing up to 1000 words. A lot of dependencies, software issues, complex environment. Could you estimate the time it would take to write these 1000 words based on what? I feel that you could estimate it. I could estimate it. Piece of paper, a pen, a laptop. I could estimate both. And I also feel that the laptop scenario would be less accurate. But when I was working in isolation, complete isolation with a pen and a piece of paper, I already know that there won't be any issues except the issues that I have. Like I'm procrastinating. I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only issues I get, not knowing what to write. But with a laptop version, ah, dependencies, software being going down, laptop going down, no battery. So many things can go wrong. Estimation would be less accurate. And that's rule number one. Never forget. Rule number one, never forget that you are in a complex environment. Dealing with unpredictable humans, machines, software, dependencies, environment. Rule number two, estimation or not, the work will be delivered in the same amount of time. Just picture this. You have a jar full of your favorite sweets. Let's say M&Ms to make it simple. How many M&Ms are in the jar? How many? Hard to predict. Accurately predict quite hard. Looking at a jar of M&Ms in front of you, you can't predict how many there are. Accurately in the job. But no matter what you say in terms of prediction, the amount of M&Ms in the jar is not influenced by what you say. If you say 200 and there's 100 actually in the jar, it's not influenced by your 200 or 300 or 50. No, it doesn't influence. The estimation doesn't influence the actual work. And the same thing applies for software estimation, software development. Whether you estimate it or not, the work will be delivered in the same amount of time. It's our expectation of of a timeline, predicting when we will deliver, setting deadlines. This is what creates lateness, <laughs> missed deadlines, where we believe a team is not performing well because they are continuously missing deadlines, estimating wrongly. But the actual work, yeah, they are still delivering maybe on time, at full capacity, efficiently. We just don't know how to estimate the work. Oh, there's so many dependencies, so many things. But if that's true, why do we even estimate? Well, one of the main reasons is upper management, directors, managers, obsessed with estimations, obsessed with timelines, deadlines, metrics. There's a common saying, when you don't know how to deliver value, what's truly important in your work, you focus on visibility, <laughs> making things visible, improving the metrics, focusing on the metrics instead of focusing on the customer. We believe that estimations are the reality. Deadlines, timelines, that's the reality. No, the reality is the actual development, the actual software that we are releasing to the customer. How is the customer liking or not the software? These are the things that we need to measure. Not if we are missing deadlines or not. But still, there are some benefits to estimating software development. Rule number three, the biggest value out of estimation, the estimation process is having, creating this common 
understanding and using Scrum agility. Scrum teams usually in the sprint planning or backlog refinement, they use something called the planning poker, estimating the work, the user stories. And sometimes when using this technique, there's some discrepancies. Some people believe that it's a five pointer. Others believe that it's a two pointer. Others 13 points. Estimating the work encourages us to have this discussion. That's the biggest value we are building crafting this common understanding of a work. We are challenging each other. We are both reading the same requirements. But I'm saying that this thing is a five-pointer and you're saying it's a two-pointer. Maybe we are missing something here and we are clarifying. Having a common understanding before starting the actual work, basically refining the requirement and just making sure that we understand it. Extremely important. One of the big benefits of estimating the work. Which brings us to rule number four. No matter how good you are experienced, knowledgeable, skilled estimations, estimations that you're doing can never be fully trusted. Many, many years back, I was working as a developer. I was coding a web service, which was consuming a lot of memory. I couldn't find the solution. I asked for help from my colleagues, co-workers. They didn't know. So I started to work on other things. I was stuck and it was a simple change. <laughs> I estimated it to one day of work. I already spent two days on it. Couldn't figure it out. And two weeks later, in the shower, I got the answer. I got the answer I was looking for. I found the root cause of the issue. I wasn't even working in the shower. That's how hard software development is. An estimation is simply a prediction. You are trying to predict based on the evidence that you have, all the information that you have, you're using that to predict what will happen in the future. It's a guess. But what do managers do? Directors, upper management, they take that guess estimation and they use that to do planning. <laughs> they tell you, no, no need to give an accurate estimation. Just give a high level estimation and they take this high level estimation and they set a deadline. They do a planning and they set a deadline. They tell you to meet this deadline. Yeah, you, you estimated it. Ah, you need to abide to your estimation. Else you will be punished, shamed. And sometimes <laughs> it's even worse. Rule number five, imposing estimations, estimates on teams. They are not even allowed to estimate the work. There's an architect somewhere, a tech lead somewhere, estimating the work for them. <laughs> then we do the plan, all working in the shadow. And then we tell them, ah, you need to meet this deadline. Or sometimes estimation is not even done. There's a deadline, you need to meet that deadline. It looks simple. I'm sure that you can do it. Just don't overcomplicate. Uh, keep it simple. I'm sure you meet this deadline. We already communicated that deadline to the client. You need to meet it. When doing that, in a way, you're also estimating for the team and doing the planning for the team. There's nothing more frustrating than robbing a team from doing their own estimation. You're robbing them from having, building this common understanding and things will go wrong. Remember, estimation, it's a guess, a prediction. 99.9999% of the time, <laughs> it will go wrong. And when it goes wrong, it's the team that will need to pay for that. They're being lazy, inefficient, they're late. The person doing the estimation, ah, it's not my problem now. It's the team's problem. Never do that. I don't recommend using estimations to do planning and all that, high, especially high level estimations. But if you insist, because I know we are, we need to understand the environment, upper management. They need that. They need timelines, they need deadlines, they need roadmaps. But please, let them estimate the work. Let them be self-managed, self-organized. Let them decide what to build, how to build it, who builds it, and by when they build it. Let them do the estimation, but always treat it as a prediction. If they don't meet it, ah, they were wrong. Next time, maybe they will get better at estimating the work. But don't punish them. Don't shame them. Especially, don't remove their bonuses simply because they were late delivering what they said they would do. Remember, the work has nothing to do with the actual estimation. Nothing to do. They might be late estimating the work, but they are still delivering on time. You need this separation. Rule number six, the more you worry about your estimates, the more certain you can be that you have way bigger things to worry about. But you're not paying attention right now. There's the red hearing fallacy. Basically, something that is distracting you, misleading you, preventing you from focusing on what's important. That's what estimations are. Deadlines, planning. When the only question, especially when we are late, the only question, how can we go faster? 
How can we meet this unrealistic deadline when we are every single day during the daily scrum? Or if you use the daily standard, that's the main question. How can we meet this deadline? How can we go faster? When, what can we do to be more efficient? What should we say to stakeholders? We are late. How can we communicate that to stakeholders? Should we tell them? Should we not tell them? Maybe we are not late. Maybe we can recover <laughs> if we work harder over time to recover this lateness. That's our main focus. The only thing that consumes our mind. How can we deliver on time? <laughs> Red hearing, a distraction. It's like you're walking in the desert, no water, and you see a mirage distracting you. It's fake, preventing you from focusing on the right things. And what's the right things? We've talked about that several times in this video. The customer, that's the right thing. When you're focusing on the deadline, on the timeline, on the roadmap, when you're afraid of being late, of missing the deadline, of estimating wrongly, you are not focusing on the customer, on value, on quality. That should be your main focus. And that's the number one thing that people get wrong with estimating. When you're focusing on estimating, getting that right, meeting these deadlines, often you're not focusing on the customer. Meeting this deadline becomes way more important. Focusing on the metric becomes way more important. Remember, when a measure, a metric becomes the target, the focus, it stops being valuable. When deadlines, estimations, planning, roadmaps become the target, the real target is missed. When teams are focusing on these things, deadlines, estimations, roadmaps, they're not focusing on the customer, the real value, that's where you should be focusing. But I know, I understand the context, really hard to explain that to upper management, directors, your leaders, but the customer is more important than actually meeting deadlines. But hey, that's part of a job, <laughs> which brings me to my next point. If you want more tips, insights on agile, scrum, personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now, and I'll see you in a few seconds.